Norman? Who's Norman? Oh, Norman. Norman's a good friend of mine. Oh, Norman. I don't really know him. I knew Norman since he was two, when he created me. Was he the one who always came to school with butter sandwiches? He was an alright kid. I mean, I don't remember much about him, to be honest. I know you're wondering how he created me. Well, I'll talk about that later on. Every day, Norman just came to my house for having some tea and some sandwich. I just talked to him about um, UFOs, Area 51, and CIA stuff. You know, I grew up with him. You know, me and him are tight. When I was 10, I had really long hair. And I started wearing my sister's clothes because it made me feel pretty. When I was 12, Norman saw me and he decided to ask me out. And um, I said yes. And there was some girl that I told him, well, actually, it ended up being a guy. Got to know each other more and more. And I just loved the attention that he gave me. I wasn't really gay, just everything was amazing. I told him, he's like, it's love at first sight. Blah, blah, blah. Then I realised after a while, it was getting too much. It was getting out of hand, like it was just unhealthy for us. So I decided to end things. Pretended I said I was about to move away, but I just cut my hair, started wearing boys' clothes, and that was it. No one seemed to remember him. It's almost as though he's invisible, unless you look directly at his face. His parents sent him to me because he was very quiet. Never really did much. He was just kind of there. You know, every time he would go to other people and stuff, they would not pay attention to him because they think he's too normal or something. His grades were good, all C's, and his home life seemed pretty good too. I ran a few tests on Norman, they were all 50, average. There was nothing wrong with Norman, he was just very normal. It's quite strange. Norman just came to my house and I saw he had blood nose on his face. So I asked him, say, what happened? And he was like, I was being bullied by three gang. So I told him, can you write me an address? He did. And well, they went to the magical Disneyland, if you know what I mean, huh? Huh? There it was, day after day. You see, I'm a visionary myself. I know the world and, and what it needs. And what this world needs is justice. Do you know who's taking away that justice? The Nazis. So when I heard that Norman was kidnapped, I was furious. Surely someone should have noticed his, his bland, tasteless ass. When his parents took us to Disneyland or whatever that thing is called, when Brad and Angelina pushed him into the car and we went to the house, he was happy. I first heard about Norman like when he was pronounced missing, like I think he was at my school but like I have no clue. I know Norman so well. Yeah and everybody wanted to know about Norman. I was in the living room watching my big 65 inch TV. Like I said to myself, I will know that freak from somewhere. But I'm like, whatever, seriously, he's not cool. After they found him, he was like so famous. And I'm like, I'm going to be friends with him just so I can become like so famous. All of a sudden, everybody was interested in Norman. I'm telling you who first. That was when I first met him. He was tangled up in a crowd of Rangeline's kids. Oh, it was so cute. I was just heading over to Branger's house. I was uh, good mates with Brad Pitt. A week later, on January 28th, the total rock star, Richard Rass, he escorted me in. I saw this creepy girl in the bushes, she yelled out my name, so I just snuck her in, let her have a bit of a look around, you know, as good rock stars do. He's such a great butler, as well as a musician. He, we found Norman behind the sofa and we had such a great conversation. I saw, yeah, this little weird white kid hiding behind the couch. Looked a bit weird, because, you know, they don't have any white kids adoptions and everything. And he showed me his wardrobe. Oh, and he has so many grey shirts standing back before he can even walk. Anyways, as I was saying, how did it create me? Well, I'm his imaginary friend. If you think you're talking to me right now, then I guess you're hallucinating. 